On the morning of Monday, November 28, 2016, police in Knox County, Tennessee, received a call requesting a welfare check. Jennifer Whited was concerned as 55-year-old Lisa Guy had failed to arrive for work. This was very out of character for Lisa. She would always call if she wasn't going to be in, or even if she was running late. Calls to her husband, 61-year-old Joel Guy Sr., also went unanswered. Police arrived at the property to conduct the welfare check. Inside, they found a horrific scene. When police arrived at the guy's property, they noted both cars were in the driveway. When they looked inside, they saw groceries, perishables that were left on the floor, still waiting to be unpacked. The officers were able to gain access to the property via the garage. As soon as they entered the property, they were hit with high heats and an extreme chemical smell. The officers began to clear the house, searching it to see if anyone was inside. The guys were inside, but they weren't alive or intact. Food grade hydrogen peroxide and bleach and general mess was everywhere. The guys' wallets and keys were located on the table. There was a large pot with something boiling inside on the stove, adding to the extreme heat in the house. The thermostat was turned up to 90, a temperature that was definitely not needed. In the dining room, several guns were found alongside a lock set and a screwdriver. In the living room was a portable heater, set to high. The police began to explore upstairs. It was about to get worse. Beyond a safety gate at the top of the stairs, a mixture of blood and clothes sat on top of the stairs. A lot of blood. The officers could hear a distressed dog locked in one of the rooms. In the bathroom was another pile of bloodied clothes and numerous medical supplies. The master bedroom held plastic sheeting, another portable heater, a blender, and tools. In a spare bedroom, also used as an exercise room, sat a pile of bloodied clothes. It was there the officers found... Hands. Severed. Human hands. They belonged to Joel Guy Sr. But where were the rest of his remains, and where was Lisa? The master bathroom floor was covered with clear plastic. Another portable heater was on full blast in the bathroom. The shower head had been removed and a long garden hose had been attached to it to fill up two blue tote-like containers. One held the rest of Joel Senior's remains, the other held some of Lisa's. Joel had been brutally attacked whilst in the exercise room, stabbed over 42 times. Some of the cuts were so deep it damaged his lungs and kidneys. The knife had also scraped across his ribs. His legs had been removed along the hips and one of his feet as well. His arms were removed and his hands were removed from his arms. His hands had been left in the exercise room. Lisa was also attacked upstairs. She was stabbed 31 times, nine of her ribs were severed, her legs were cut off below her knees and her arms were removed at the shoulder like her husband's. All of her remains were placed in one of the totes, apart from her head. That had been simmering in the pot on the stove for two days. The medical examiner would state later that the head wasn't just cut off, it was removed by force. There was one more room for the officers to search, another spare bedroom used by Joel and Lisa's son, Joel Guy Jr. Here, they found some of the most incriminating evidence I have ever seen, a handwritten murder plan. Joel Jr. had recently been visiting his parents for Thanksgiving. It was your average family get-together that Thanksgiving, but Joel Jr. was not his usual self. His sister, Michelle, told how he was usually a loner and rarely socialised with the family. Whilst they were gathered around having drinks and general family banter, Joel would seclude himself in another room. He always had done. So when Joel took an interest in her sons that holiday, she thought it odd. There was also a felt but unacknowledged tension in the air. 
but she never expected to receive the news that she did a few days after leaving her parents' home. Joel Michael Guy Jr. was born March 13, 1988. At the time of the murders, he lived in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He was attending Louisiana State University. He had never had a job in his life. So, how was he able to support himself as he studied and lived with his roommate? Well, his parents. His parents were paying for everything. In fact, many told how Lisa took a job for as long as she did just to support her son. But Lisa was joining her husband in retirement, and her fully grown son's expenses were not in their budget. They were planning to tell Joel Jr. that they were no longer willing to help him out financially at Christmas. But they told him before Thanksgiving. My brother had stated to me that uh, he was uh, retiring and moving up and he had cut his son off from any money, anything. He was tired of keeping him up. And Lisa was fixing, they was fixing to move in the family home and Lisa was fixing to cut him off and when come Christmas when he was supposed to come in. But he came in for Thanksgiving. Michelle Tyler. You Joel Sr.'s daughter? Yes, ma'am. And the defendant's half-sister? Yes, ma'am. You could, um, there was a little bit of tension. And so when everyone was inside and it was just like... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. It was just me and dad, dad and myself that was bad grammar. It was just um, me and dad. Um, we were out on the porch and he said that Lisa hadn't told Joel Michael and that you could... Um, you could feel like that that was what was causing the little bit of tension inside the house. How do I know he knew before Thanksgiving? This murder was premeditated, very premeditated. Joel Jr. was seen 19 days earlier buying supplies to kill his parents with. His parents were paying for the items their son would use to kill them. He couldn't even be asked to source the money elsewhere to buy the items out of his own pocket. Joel Jr. had arrived at the family home that Thanksgiving with the two blue totes in his car. Perhaps that was why he was so outgoing that holiday. He knew if everything went accordingly to his meticulously thought out plan, not only would he be able to acquire all the money in his parents' account, but Lisa's $500,000 life insurance, of which he and his father were beneficiaries of. If his father was dead, however, one of Joel Sr.'s daughters hadn't heard from him over the weekend. This in itself was very out of the ordinary, as the family had a group chat in which they would talk very frequently. Apart from Joel Jr., that is. It was even more odd that it was her birthday on Sunday. Did you hear from your father or communicate with him at all uh, on Saturday, November the 26th, or Sunday, November the 27th? No. And did that surprise you? It did. And why did it surprise you? Because Sunday was my birthday. Did you expect a call from your father on that day? Yes. Did you find it unusual that he did not call? It was the first birthday I ever missed. She spoke to her sisters, and neither of them had heard from the couple that weekend. Michelle said she would pop by their house after work on Monday. But on Monday afternoon, she was contacted by police. She was notified that bodies had been found in their home, but they were unable to identify them due to their, uh, condition? Thankfully, Lisa's boss had saved Michelle from discovering this house of horrors by herself. Allow me to read you some of Joel Jr.'s murder plan. Get knives. Quiet. Multiple. Get sledgehammer. Crush bones. Bring blender and food grinder. Grind meat. Get bleach. Denature proteins. Get plastic bin for denaturation process. Does not matter where they are killed, just get rid of bloody spots to prevent evidence of time of death. Get rid of bodies inside house, there and my DNA already there. Flush chunks down toilet. Get plastic sheeting for disposal process. He's not alive to claim her half of the insurance money, or mine, 500,000. Flood the house, cover up forensic evidence. Turn heater up as high as it goes, speeds decomposition. Bleach reacts with luminol, just like blood. Douse area with bleach. Don't have to get rid of body if there is no forensic evidence on the body. 
It would seem Joel attacked his father in the exercise room whilst Lisa was out shopping in the morning of November 26th. His father put up a fight, with Joel Jr. receiving multiple defence wounds to his hands. Once his father had died, he waited for his mother to return shopping. She is seen exiting Walmart just after midday. It is thought she went straight home. She bought a few bags of shopping in when Joel Jr. somehow lured her upstairs due to the lack of blood evidence downstairs. There, he murdered his mother the same way he did with his dad, cutting their clothes off and leaving them in a bloody pile on the floor. He dismembered them and placed them in a mixture of chemicals in hopes of dissolving them John George Haig style. His hand wound, however, was getting in the way and becoming a concern. He had a particularly bad injury on one of his thumbs, so he returned home to seek medical care and to also get an alibi. I had some rather severe cuts on my hands. Um, I had a cut on my right palm right here where there's a scar, and I was like, uh, very severe cut on my left palm where there's a scar. I was worried about losing my left palm, and so I needed that injury. Before he left, he turned the heating up as much as he could to aid the decomposition of the bodies. I believe he planned to return to finish the job, but did not factor in his mother's absence from work being noted. Or he was just too damn lazy. Before he left, he used his parents' cards to prepay things such as rent and bills. Joel lived with his long-term and seemingly only friend, Michael. His roommate told how Joel Jr. didn't talk about his family much. He only found out Joel had sisters once he was arrested and charged for the murder of his parents on Tuesday the 29th of November. It seemed he had alienated himself by choice. Joel Jr. showed no remorse or emotion during his trial. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree premeditated murder of Joel Guy Sr. Count number two, please. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree premeditated murder of Lisa Guy. Count number three. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree felony murder of Lisa Guy. Count number four. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of first-degree felony murder of Joel Guy Sr. Count number five. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of felony murder of Lisa Guy. Count number six. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of abuse of a corpse of Joel Guy Sr. And count number seven. We, the jury, find the defendant, Joel Michael Guy, guilty of abuse of a corpse of Lisa Guy. He asked if he was to be found guilty for the death penalty. The judge disregarded this and gave him life imprisonment. Just for those wondering, as I was wondering as well, the dog that was locked in the room was rescued and he is okay. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to check out some of my other true crime or gaming videos, please feel free to do so.